Hi, so I came across a guy called Michael Davey, and he's doing this foam for prosthetics, for theatre prosthetics, and he makes it out of gelatin uh, instead of latex, and that's actually struck me as a brilliant idea, so I thought I'd give it a go, and the results were actually so impressive that I thought I'd share it with you. Now, of course, I take it uh, one step further into the sort of investigations that I'm interested in, and I'm going to split these videos up. So the first video is about how to make a... Um, organic biodegradable foam that is plastic and really interesting and if you make it you'll discover how really kind and generous and strange this foam is. And then the second video I'm going to use that foam to make a very strange jelly capacitor. So let's go through the foam first. Now all of these um, measures are actually by volume. So what I've got in here is a hundred milliliters of um, 300 bloom pigskin gelatin acid refined. It's just the stuff you buy from the grocers actually. You can get it on eBay, you can go down to Asda and pick yourself up a few packets and you'll get some gelatin that's just like this. And then in here I've got 50 milliliters of water. So it's one part water, two parts gelatin. And you just pour the gelatin into the water to give it a little bit of time to swell. And that's your basic gelatin mix. Now, what you need to add to that is a plasticizer. Now, there are a whole load of plasticizers that you can add. Some people use sugar, some people use honey, some people use glycerin. Um, in order to make his prosthetic foam, what Davy does is uses two plasticizers, glycerin and honey. And I thought, well, why not? And when I gave it a go, actually, it does make a big difference. So what I've got here is some very cheap honey. And you add one part honey, which is 50 milliliters. So we need 50 millilitres of honey. And we need two parts of glycerin, which is 100 millilitres of glycerin. Now, I get um, my glycerin in little tubs like this because I order it through chemical suppliers, but glycerin is readily available. It's used for tons of things. If you go down to the chemist, you'll get it in little glass bottles. So we need 100 millilitres of glycerin. And after we've given that a little time to swell, then we can add our honey and glycerin mix to it. Now, this stuff will not dissolve like that because glycerin needs about 40, 45 degrees centigrade to dissolve. So in order to get it to dissolve, what you have to do is heat it. Now, you want to heat it uh, in the microwave if you want, because it's quicker or on a pan if you want, and you heat it until the gelatin has dissolved. Try not to let the mix boil, because what you're making essentially is a um, gelatin toffee. So if you let it boil, it's going to burn. So you really just want to heat it until that glycerin has dissolved. Okay, so here it is after it's had a couple of minutes in the microwave, and as you can see, it's just a kind of gooey liquid, really, and it's kind of like a gelatin toffee. Now, you can do this on the hob if you want. You don't have to do it in a microwave. You're just looking to dissolve the gelatin crystals. That's all you really want to do. Once it's like this, what we're going to do is we're going to make it into a foam. You don't have to. If you just let this cool down below its 45 degrees, it would harden up to be like a, a puck of solid, flexible rubber. But we want a foam out of it. So just find yourself a handy bowl and pour your gelatin mix into the bowl. Now all you want to do is add a bit of foaming agent. That sounds really cool. Actually, it's just washing up liquid. Add a few drops of washing up liquid. Say about five millilitres or so. If it doesn't foam enough, add some more washing up liquid. Then take this thing. This thing is just your standard kitchen mixer. And set it going. Now I should say that this is hot. So don't, don't set it going so much, it sprays things out at you. Start it slowly. Once it gets going after a minute or two, then turn it up to its full, and you need to whip it for about 10 minutes or so. So I'm going to do that and then get back to you. Okay, so after you've finished it, whipping it for a few minutes, what will happen is it'll increase in volume. It's gone up about a third of its volume and you'll see it's foamed up really rather nicely. Now all you have to do is let that set, and you want to set it as quickly as possible. Now gelatin obviously sets as its temperature drops below about 40, 45. So if you stick that in the fridge for a while, that will set as a foam and keep its foam shape. Now the interesting thing about this is if you reheat it again in a microwave, it'll still set as a foam. So you can reheat it, pour it in a microwave and cast it, and it becomes a castable foam. 
The only problem with this stuff is it's obviously jelly, it's jelly with sugar in. So a lot of things are going to enjoy eating that. So if you're going to keep that for any length of time, you really need to keep it in the fridge. Or you need to put some kind of antibacterial agent in there. Now, I very frequently use oil of cloves, because oil of cloves really works really, really well. Or you can use this stuff, which is Listerine. Listerine actually has Tymol on it, in it. And the rate, or the amount of Listerine, is about 10 millilitres to uh, 1 litre. So you can see here we've got about 500 millilitres of foam. It started off at about 250. And just add about 5 millilitres of Listerine to it and whip that in. And there you go, your foam all ready, smelling nice and minty. And as I say, if you want to use it like that, pop it into your fridge. If you want to cast that, heat it again in the microwave and pour it into your mould. We're going to do something else with it, but that'll be in the next video.